Hey, so welcome to uh, React Holiday Season 2, Day 2. Um, I made a huge mistake, and as I was recording, I recorded the wrong screen, so I did this whole thing, and then realized, wrong screen. I was just recording a blank screen, my second screen blank, for like 15 minutes. Um, which is probably good, because like 15 minutes is way too long. You don't want to watch all that. Um, so I'm going to try to make it brief uh, this time. And um, especially because my, my kids want to play with me. So um, this is um, day two. So uh, first of all, first of all, uh, I, I want to congratulate you on getting through day one. Um, and if you haven't, I want to encourage you to, to do so. So the first half of this video is going to be talking about um, the assignments for day one to make sure that you uh, have were able to accomplish it uh, as you had hoped. Um, and the second half is going to be talking about uh, lists, how to use them, and then giving you the new assignment for day two. So uh, if you if you didn't you know quite make it like you had, like you had started with good intentions, but you didn't quite get there, um, no problem. We're gonna just work through the work through it together, and uh, you'll be all caught up, and then you can move on to the next step. So we're on day two, right? I have now forked this for day two. If you want, you can just uh, copy this URL. It'll be in the email. Um, now, I had said originally that there were a couple ways that you could make this component better um, and things that you might not know about function components. Now, I'm not going to tackle all of them. I'm just going to show you the ones that I use literally every day when I'm um, defining function components. So first of all, um, I think that it is super important to be able to um, customize the type of component um, that this thing renders as. So, um, so, so right now I have a list item, um, but I don't necessarily know what the future may hold, and this might not always need to be a list item, or maybe I know that it al already know that it doesn't need to be a list item every time. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of make it more dynamic. I'd like to be able to pass in uh, a different type of component. So in this case, a span. Now, right now, the definition doesn't support that, um, but I can. So now that I know that that is on props, I can change this to props.component. And you can see, oh, you saw it right there. Um, this flashed from the list item, which has that natural dot in H, uh, was like in HTML, it'll get a dot when rendered. Um, so I have changed this now so that we have props.component. Now, there's a little bit of a problem here. So what I have here is I'm using props.component, which I'm getting is a property on props, um, but then I'm spreading out all of these. Um, so I'm passing down props to the uh, element. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it here, but that's kind of like a no-no if I pass down non-HTML attribute props to a, like an element, like a span or a list item, like a native HTML element. So we want to use a feature of JavaScript called um, destructuring assignment. Now we know that this is going to be an object, no matter what. That's how props come in to these function components. They're always an object. Now, the way destructuring assignment works is that we can, if we know that the shape of something is an object, we can then say, I know it's an object, so I want to peel off values that are inside of that object. So this is the opposite of like an object literal. Um, and then there's this fancy syntax um, called what rest parameters or something like that, which basically allows us to take any anything that we haven't peeled off of that object and put it into a, a, a new uh, <laughs> a new uh, variable. So uh, we had this just as um, oops props before, and this is uh, this is like almost identical to that. So you can see that it's still still works. Everything still works magically, right? Now, what this allows us to do is it allows us to peel off different values like this component value and remove it from our props object. So that's what we want is we don't want to spread out this component. So um, I'm going to take off component here. And um, we get an error, obviously. Um, so we're going to pull that off and just use component. Now, this kind of looks like it worked, but it actually didn't. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove that to you. So um, anytime JSX has 
a lowercase um, as we have here, it assumes that that is like a standard HTML element. So like div, span, list item, whatever. Um, so it is just rendering that as component and the browser doesn't really care a whole lot. It's like, okay, whatever, like it'll probably look like a div or a span or something like that. So the way that we instruct JSX to use a React element is to use an uppercase letter here. Now, problematically, this is not defined because the uppercase component is different than the lowercase component. So there's a little trick. We can use a colon to say that we wanna take this property, but not refer to it as the lowercase component. We want to, for the scope of this function, refer to it as uppercase component. That totally satisfies JSX. Um, we can inspect this again. Uh, sorry, inspecting things in, in Code Sandbox is a little funky, but um, and so now it's coming in as a span. So what happens if we don't provide? We have another problem here. What happens if we don't provide the default uh, element? Well, uh, we it's going to blow up. So we can do another thing, and this gets a little bit crazy. Um, but we can do, uh, we can put a list item there. So this has the same net result as what we had before, which is the list item, but now it's customizable. We can throw anything that we want in there and be good to go. So this whole set of things is something that I use all the time. Um, there's one more that I wanna show you. Um, right now, we are passing all of the props along. So if I had, if I put a class name on this, this another thing that I do all the time. So if I put a class name on this, um, something, right? Uh, we inspect that and we see that again, a little funky, something is applied. Now I, if I take that value off of this props object, it's not going to get spread out here. So I want to prove that to you and show that show you that now, as I pull that that property off of this object, um, now it's not getting applied. Now we can fix that like pretty easily by doing like class name, um, and then passing class name again. But we haven't done anything. Like this is the same place that we were before with just spreading those props out. Now. Where this gets interesting is if we pull that class name value off, what we can do is we can add values that our component wants to care about, but then also allow people to um, extend it, right? So if I just put a static um, Pokemon list item class on this, basically no one can ever change it. No matter what class names they send me, um, it's only ever gonna show this. Now, if I want to allow them to extend it, I can put these things in an array, and there's NPM modules that will do this for you, but also you can just do it pretty simply with the tools that you have. Um, I can put these in an array called dot join on them, and um, then as the next element in this array called class name, or put class name in there. Now, if we inspect this again, um, we'll see that we have not only the um, the class name that we want our component to apply, but also the class name that was provided to us by the developer. So this is all very cool. All of these things I use like 25 times a day at least. So I wanted to show those to you. Those are things that I like, like my most frequent tools. Um, hopefully you were able to find even more things that might be useful to you. So um, that kind of, that's just a couple things, a couple extra things, a um, couple really important things that you can do with function components that make them super useful and reusable and all those great things. So that's kind of wrapping up day one. So hopefully you, you, you got something out of that. Um, what I want to do now is I want to move on to day two, and we're going to kind of continue this trend of things that you can do with arrays. Now, something that's super interesting about React is, is that unlike other frameworks, um, that give you kind of a special API for lists or repeating things or whatever. Um, React doesn't. It says we have JavaScript for that type of thing. And it's kind of unique in that. Uh, and it's possible that other 
frameworks and libraries have, have adopted that now, um, but it was pretty unique at the time. And um, I think maybe the first map that I ever wrote um, was in React to iterate over elements. And I didn't even know it was part of just standard JavaScript. Um, but it is so important to get an understanding of how to use array methods um, to iterate over lists. I've never written a big feature in React that didn't have some type of list iteration. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And I just want to kind of show you around. So right now we have a list item. Sorry. Uh, right now we have a list item and uh, we're just saying Pokemon, right? So I'm going to change that to something a little more one Pokemon focused. Um, and we'll do Bulbasaur and we'll do Charmander. Okay, so we have these three. The problem is that they're static. I have to know exactly what I have in order to write this code. Now, this is not the way code works in the real world. Typically, we'd have some data from an API endpoint or from the server, and uh, maybe that might come in in JSON, and we would need to dynamically list out those values because we don't necessarily know what we have. And this is where map comes in. So I want to show you a little bit about what map does before we start using it for React. So first of all, I'm going to uh, create a new array. So we'll say let character data. And that's going to actually I'm going to do kind of like a more real world example. So we'd have an array, which is our, our collection, and then um, maybe objects for each of the the individual pieces of data in that collection. So we'll have name is Pikachu. Um, we'll do Bulbasaur and Charmander. Okay. So we have these three items, the same three items that we have here. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just uh, console log. And then we're just going to take the character data and we're going to call map on it. Now map is a function that takes an array and it creates a new array from it. And in the middle, what it does is it takes a function that it will run on every sing <laughs> run on every single element in that array when constructing this new function. So it looks something like this. Uh, we're going to take the function. Um, we're going <laughs> sorry. We're going to take the item as an argument. Um, and then we're going to call a function with it. And this is where we transform that item into the item that's going to be mapped over onto this new array. So in our case, what we want to do is we want to take each um, piece of data and we want to turn that into a React element. Okay. So um, we're just going to put, um, actually, I'm just going to, I'm actually going to copy and paste this. So I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm just going to paste it up here. So we know that that works because it's it's working now. And I'm going to make the name dynamic. So um, I will say item dot name. Oh my gosh, my typing. And we know that that name property is on each of these. So let's uh, open up this console and see what we got. So um, again, we're using character data all defined here. We're mapping over it. We're giving it a function to apply to each element. And what we see is that instead of an object here, now we have these React elements. And that's what those look like in code. You don't need to worry about that. But instead of having the, the, the data, now we have an array of object of these, uh, these, these elements. So awesome. So uh, now we don't, logging that out, oops. Logging that out is, wow, a keyboard. Um, logging that out is not helpful. Uh, what we want to do is we want to use that to construct our list. Now we can't just put it in here. We actually need to just like interpolating this value, we need to treat this like, um, like JavaScript and put those curly braces around it to escape out of the JSX. Um, cool, we see those new values, which means that we can delete those. And um, now we have our list, we're using map to kind of dynamically create um, this list of elements from data. Pretty awesome. So that is the basic gist of it. What I want to tell you is that you're not limited to map. 
um, you can filter things. You can use the reducer function, which allows you to effectively map and filter at the same time. There are so many functions. Uh, you can find them on the Mozilla um, what developer, developer or something. I don't know what the N stands for. MDN Web Docs. It's uh, developer.mozilla.org. You can search for array and see all of the methods that are available on array. Now, I want you to explore these. I want you to think of real world scenarios where you might want to filter some elements out or kind of add some in or whatever, uh, and just kind of play around, find an API that makes sense for your use cases and um, just play around. One thing that you need to know, and this is what we'll cover in kind of the, the review of this, is, is that not all of these actually return a new array like map. Some of them actually change the array in place. So beware of that as you are working because that could be very frustrating for you. So something to think of, um, again, I think filter and reduce are going to be kind of some of the other like more important ones that you use um, and slice. So that's it for today. Um, I really hope that uh, you learned something. I hope that you are continuing to feel motivated. If you're not, just send me an email or hit me up on Twitter. I'd be happy to uh, kind of talk it through with you. Um, anyway, best of luck today. Um, we'll see you tomorrow.